What's up, Cal Gang? All right, we got some change of variables problems going on here. So it gives us this, uh, this double integral over a region. It says the region is the ellipse. And usually when you're given an ellipse, you're like, nah, I don't want to do that. Because you, the ellipses are kind of weird because they're going to be really hard to evaluate in like normal mode in Cartesian or whatever. But evaluating them in polar is like just as difficult. In fact, it might be even harder. I was looking at this. I'm thinking you might actually be able to solve this without the change of variable, but it'd probably be a lot of work. Uh, but in polar, it's not going to happen. There's going to be like cosine squared and stuff. It's going to be hard. So what you want to do is you want to reevaluate. So let me show you what this region is going to look like. Uh, so that x is going to be at like 2, and then the y is going to be at like 3. So this is like negative 3, and this is like 2. It's 3, negative 2. And yeah, that's going to be hard to evaluate. You don't actually need to draw this region, but I'm going to show you why it's important. So it gives us these bounds. Wow, how perfect. These change of variables. And all you have to do is plug them in, right? So let's plug them in and get our new equation. So let's say, all right, so plug in x, so it's going to be 9 for u, or for u squared, plus 4, 9b squared is equal to 36. Well, as you'll notice that these will both become 36, so you can actually just rewrite this as u squared plus b squared is equal to 1, which is way nicer. It's going to look something like this, a circle with radius of 1. So much easier to evaluate. So there's one last thing we need to do before we make our integral, is the Jacobian. I like to do the Jacobian first, because you don't forget it. Jacobian is the easiest thing to forget. So let's say Jacobian, it's going to be equal to the matrices. So it's going to be the root of x with respect to u, which is 2, then the root of x with respect to v, there's no v, so it's going to be 0. Derivative of y with respect to u, no thing. Derivative of y with respect to v, so it's going to be 3. And that'll give the Jacobian of 6, obviously, because you do that, and you subtract by that. Pretty nice, right? Okay, so we can set up our integral now. Let's do it. Our integral is going to be the integral from Actually, double integral, forgive me, I was just doing one integral problems. So it goes from 0 to 1, obviously, because the radius is 1, and it's a full rotation, so 0 to 2 pi. Then you have to plug in what you got, so the Jacobian, don't forget that, so it's going to be 6. And then, so we have x squared, but we have what x is equal to, which is 2u. So you have to replace x squared with 2u. So it's going to be 4u squared, right? And then, obviously, you have to do r, d, r, d, theta. But then you'll notice that we have a u and an r d r d theta. You cannot have those two things at the same time. So a u is taking place of x in this, basically. Like if we look at our axis here, this is, okay, I kind of shouldn't have drawn it on the same one, but say this is u, this is v. This is what our axis is going to look like. So u is basically taking place of x, which means u is going to be equal to r cosine of theta. So because it's u squared, it's going to be r uh, squared cosine squared of theta. So there we go. Now we have something nice we can work with. So let's go ahead and write it out. So the integral is equal to 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 1. So let's, uh, hold on, we can just uh, integrate this, I know. This is the easy part, guys. Once you do like a million, once you do like five of these, you get it. It's all right. <laughs> you just got to get really fast, get good at that. So the r3, the, or the r squared is going to work with r just to become r to the third. So then you're going to take the derivative of that. It's going to be over 4. So the 4s are going to cancel out. So it's just going to be 6. Uh, and then because it's 0 to 1, it's going to be r to the 4th, so it's going to be 1. So then it's going to be cosine squared theta d theta. So from here, you can use a little bit of an identity. So it's going to be equal to 0 to 2 pi. So it's going to be 6. But the identity is 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. It's equal to cosine squared of theta. And this makes something we can actually integrate. Ooh, hold on. So it becomes integral. So the 6 and the negative 2, or the 1 over 2, is going to come out. And it's going to be 3, and then it's going to be theta plus 1 half sine of 2 theta from 0 to 2 pi. I'll give you a hint. This is going to be 0 every time. So it's just going to be 3 pi times, or 3 times 2 pi minus 0. So it's going to be equal to 6 pi. And that's the final answer. So yeah, that's how you solve these kind of problems. Uh, this is a pretty simple change of variable. You have to do two changes of variables, if you didn't notice. When we did r d r d theta, we're literally just doing a change of variable. Putting in that r d r d theta is the same thing as doing the Jacobian. But we just already know what the Jacobian is going to be, which is why the r is there. So, uh, yeah, this is a double change of variable problem. But it's a really cool one, and uh, it's not that hard once you get the hang of it. You just need to remember to put the Jacobian in. And if you don't forget that, you're set sailing. You're going to be good. All right? So, uh, yeah, good luck on your calc homework, guys.